Everybody pop a pill and get comfortable because it's time to talk about Maniac. Let's get started. Hello everybody, welcome to Thumb Together TV. Today we're going to be talking about Netflix's Maniac together. My name is Andrew Fantasia. Thank you so much for tuning in. As usual, if you enjoy this video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up and give some love to that subscribe button as well. So what's the deal with Maniac? I feel like a stand-up comedian. What's the deal with airline food? Am I right, folks? But seriously, what is the deal with Maniac? And the answer to that question, at least from me, is I'm not sure that I know. The best way I can sum up Maniac, for those of you who don't know what it is, imagine if Stanley Kubrick made Inception, but he hired the Wachowskis to produce it. Something like that. This is one of those shows that can absolutely 100% be categorized as weird or possibly even trippy. It's one of those. Lots of people popping pills and science gone awry and hallucinations that make no sense and reactions to those hallucinations that make even less sense. This is the kind of show where a character could be sitting on a park bench and all of a sudden a man in a giant mouse costume will walk in front of the character juggling something and screaming at the top of his lungs and then the mouse man will disappear and the character on the bench will just kind of blink and pull out his phone and dial a number and call his friend and when his friend answers he'll say do you think the Cubs will ever win the World Series? As if nothing strange had just happened. This is one of those shows and if you're not prepared for that you're gonna have a bad time. If you go into Maniac expecting a show where people react to strange things the way that people in reality would react to strange things, you will be severely confused and disappointed. But if you just kind of sit back and let it wash over you and go along for the ride, I think you're going to find something that's almost as profound as it thinks it is. But it does have something beautiful to say, and we'll get to that later. The show stars Jonah Hill and Emma Stone, fresh off of Superbad, if 11 years qualifies as fresh. And these are both very sad people who have led some very sad lives. And I think it's safe to say that they both suffer from clinical depression. So they sign up to be essentially lab rats in an experiment. There's a pharmaceutical company that is testing a new series of drugs called the ABC pills. And according to the scientists who made these pills, if you take them, they will cure your brain of sadness. They are the ultimate pill to cure sadness, depression, any malady of the brain can be fixed by these pills, apparently. But they're still in the testing stages, so they need people to come down submit to a lab experiment and make sure the pills do their trick. And these two characters, Owen and Annie, they meet there in this lab where they are promptly fed medicines of all kinds and strapped into chairs in weird sterile environments and hallucinations occur therein. Now, what attracted me to Maniac at first, what made me want to sit down and watch it was uh, there were a series of trailers for it and I saw in the trailers just the overall aesthetic of the show. And it is very anachronistic in the way it's set up. This looks like it could be Blade Runner sometimes. Other times it looks like it could have been made in 1984. And those two styles meld together very well. This is a sci-fi at the end of the day. Ha! Sorry jocks, we tricked you into coming here. Welcome to the weird shit. But no, seriously, this is a sci-fi and it shows a lot. But the story itself doesn't hinge on that. Yes, this is a world where instead of the Statue of Liberty, New York has a thing called the Statue of Extra Liberty, which is a man holding up a spear. This is also a world where you can go to the park and play chess against a purple robot koala. And that's just a thing that you can do. And there are robots that scoot around and, and pick up your dog shit so that you don't have to do it. And people live in Blade Runner-esque apartments. But on the other hand, everything is a little less cyber 
and a little more analog. Uh, these robots that patrol the streets look like they may have to be wound up every now and then. The electronic billboards aren't so much touch screens as they are just revolving slats. Little things like that. I mean, look at the glasses on these scientists. Those are some 80s glasses, baby. That's what attracted me to Maniac was when I saw just how anachronistic the set design was going to be. I was like, I'm on board, sure, let me see what this is all about. And by the end of it all, it's only 10 episodes, and once I got to the end, I think that the overall set design is still my favorite part of Maniac. I love the way it looks. This is a beautiful looking show. All of the TV screens in it are old school glass cathode tubes, and yeah, you're gonna have to adjust the tracking every now and then. It's that kind of era that this takes place in, but at the same time, it's also kind of futuristic. But of course, Maniac is a much more heady story than that, and at the end of the day, it is about people, particularly these two people. And when they get put under, under these pills and such, they have all these shared hallucinations where they'll hallucinate that they are a married couple from Long Island in the 1980s with horrible fashion sense, or they'll hallucinate that they are a pair of, like, suave con artists in the 1920s who were trying to rob a mansion or they'll hallucinate a scenario where Jonah Hill is an Icelandic ambassador and Emma Stone is a secret agent from Texas and she rescues him from an alien invasion all kinds of crazy stuff goes down in here come to think of it maybe even super bad was all just a shared hallucination that they had in this lab where the two of them existed in the same world and they had to find each other amidst all of this chaos and calamity and oh my god I just broke my own brain in an era like the one we live in today where mental health is more and more of a big concern, I think Maniac fits in this era very well. Every major character in the show is very, very sad. There's even an artificial intelligence, a computer with artificial intelligence, who becomes depressed. And sometimes this is to the show's benefit because it gives you a lot of really insightful looks at how different people handle these different maladies and how some of them are more introverted with their depression and some are more aggressive uh, and outspoken about it and it really kind of shows you different facets of the same coin which is wonderful but then it can also be to these shows detriment in a way that kind of feels more like a show don't tell kind of situation both the actors play multiple characters throughout the show jonah hill plays two characters in particular who are so outwardly sad all the time, including his main character, Owen, that every single one of the lines he delivers when he's playing these characters is mumbled. And mumbled to the point where me watching the show on my iPad with headphones in can barely understand what this guy is saying. Someone will interact with him and say, Owen, look at such and such. What do you think of this? And he'll be like... And he'll deliver a whole monologue like that. There are points where it's a beautiful story about a person who is trapped in this shell that they created and, and wanting to break out. And it's great and you root for him because you, you want to see the guy be happy. But then there are moments where it's like the plot is trying to happen and you're trying to listen to the plot. But it's being delivered in dialogue like this. And you just want to reach into the screen and throttle somebody. I think the best way to sum up whether or not you will like it is by saying that Maniac is kind of a Rorschach test. What you see is going to be very different from what other people see. Particularly if you suffer from mental health issues or you know somebody close to you who suffers from mental health issues, then Maniac is going to hit you in a way that it might not hit somebody who has no exposure to that. At the same time, those people with no exposure to depression and things like that, they might see something that others don't. I would love to do an experiment of my own and get all sciency on you for a second, and I would love to hear from both sides of the coin and hear what they saw and what they didn't see. Because I think there's a fascinating character study happening in Maniac you just have to get through a lot of bizarre stuff in order to find it. Did I enjoy the show? Parts of it. Did I think the show was either really good or really bad? No. Will I watch it again? Maybe, maybe not. Will I ever forget it? Not a chance. It does stick with you and it's the kind of thing you'll be thinking about 
more and more once it ends. But that is Maniac. I highly suggest you see it for yourself and draw your own conclusions because that is the kind of show that it is. I'm Andrew Fantasia. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you here next time. And until then, adios.